Some people may say, you know, does poaching still happen in this day and age? Well, the answer is it does. Our magnificent wild salmon have fought their way up our rivers and fired our imaginations for thousands of years, but they're now on a path to extinction unless we take decisive action on several fronts. Fish poaching is a nationally recognised wildlife crime that poses a serious threat to our wild salmon. With wild salmon numbers at crisis point, the illegal removal of even a small number of fish can have a big impact. Poaching isn't just a romantic notion about taking one for the pot, it often involves serious, organised criminal activity. To deal with this, Scotland has a network of fisheries enforcement officers known as water bailiffs, who have legal powers to tackle the illegal taking of wild salmon and sea trout. When you arrive at somebody to get over the first interface of the bailiff and the person on the river bank, key is you need to know what they're doing before you ask them what they're doing. The bit in the bank where they've hidden the two fish and then let them verbally put their foot right in it. Oh, I've caught nothing today. No, right. Then you know you're on to a winning streak. On those occasions you have to act firm, fairly, never swear, Never lose your, uh, your, your, your temper and keep in full control. But you've got to be prepared to meet fire with fire, I'm afraid. Hi, right, so we've got some of the articles and instruments that we've seized over the years. Uh, here are just some examples for you. I have a piece of tin foil here. Wrap the tin foil round about the hooks, you lower that over the, the bridge, lower that down into the water, sinks to the bottom, you're watching off the bridge, whenever the, the tin foil disappears in the blackness of the water, the perpetrator of this crime pulls it up and the fish is impaled on the bottom of the, one of the trebles. And, uh, See the, the hooks here, yeah. pretty devastating. This is a gaff seized from our catchment. Um, basically consists of a bent piece of metal with a barb on it. Debbie, if you put your hand out like a fish's tail and I would see this down under the water and I'm sliding the snare over the fish's tail when it's over. I merely pull it, I'm not going to pull it too hard or Debbie will lose her wrist here. Um, as the fish captured and it's wriggling about and you can pull it out of the water. This is a static net. This is what they call a gill net. And this sits across a river like a curtain. And the idea here is that fish swim into the net and are caught. It's very indiscriminate. In these nets, I've seen porpoise, I've seen protected species of bird, as well as salmon and sea trout. Very, very destructive. I'm saying indiscriminate gill netting. There's a harbour of porpoise. There's so much the variety to the job. You know, one day you can be out electrofishing, and then the next day treating Japanese knotweed, teaching children. The variety is immense. The paperwork side of things is getting more and more challenging and intense and it does, it pulls you away from the actual physical job that you're wanting to do, which is, is really frustrating. The office administration will continue at all times 
and we're basically juggling the whole time to try and fulfill all the governance issues and do the job on the ground. The Loch Haber region, is, it's, a, it's a very large chunk of the west coast of Scotland. You've got 42 separate fisheries, you've got a huge coastline, you've got islands, you've got sea lochs. What we found with poaching here is when the aquaculture industry started, poaching incidents fell off a cliff because there was a sudden glut of salmon on the market. It's not the level it used to be, and I, I would like to stress that, but that is not to say we can keep our eye off the ball and just, you know, think it will go away, because it won't. We find when we get fish here, it, it can change from very low level poaching to suddenly being a big problem. And this is why we have 17 voluntary water bailers in the region. Two years ago, I lifted a net at the mouth of the river Lochie, which a local resident had reported to us, and it spanned probably about 350 meters across the mouth of the river. There wasn't a square inch that a salmon could have accessed the river. Any salmon coming up that night would have hit that net. Now, if that hadn't been reported to us, that could have done untold damage to the salmon population of the river here. That was a commercial poaching operation spearheaded from outside this region. Uh, we found that out later. But, you know, this is reality, not the guy with the wee gill net and one for the pot, you know? So we need to remember this, you know? This is, this is, uh, serious criminal operations at times, you know, when the fish are here, because it's big, big money for these guys. We're trying our best here. We care very, very deeply about the salmon in this region. All of the water bailiffs care very, very deeply about the salmon in this region, but you can only do so much with what you've got, and we really need the funding model from fishery boards to change. The D catchment is 2,100 kilometres squared and the Don catchment is 1,400 kilometres squared. The vast majority of incidents that we have here on the D and the Don are, are minor rod and line offences. We also have some organised uh, gangs visiting the river as well at key times throughout the year. During 2020 we experienced double the number of cases as a result of the Covid lockdown. And the reason this occurred was the fact that the, the rivers were a bit more open, there was less people out and about in the river, there was uh, some opportunists that uh, um, came up and, and broke some of the lockdown rules. Fish poaching is the largest proportion of wildlife crime uh, undertaken here in Scotland and unfortunately that's not necessarily reflected in the, the crimes or the, pen, the penalties associated with that. Um, the average penalty for a, a fish poaching incident is around about £200. So that uh, £200 uh, fine is a negligible sum to uh, an organised criminal gang but much more substantial to an individual uh, rod and line um, Fisher. Um, the issue is that perhaps there's not that separation between the two uh, and it may be worth the risk for, for those organised uh, gangs to continue. Aside from having individuals charged with the offences that they've committed under the Fisheries Scotland Act is the ability to seize uh, equipment, to seize vehicles associated with that criminal activity as well and that's something that we can do. One thing which we have really valued here in the D and the Don is the support from the local community, anglers, proprietors, gillies, members of the public out walking their dog, reporting any suspicious activity and we really urge people to continue to do that. It has been uh, very, very helpful. If anybody does report uh, an incident, that information will be kept completely anonymous so there's no risk to uh, the person reporting that incident. These are our fish, they belong to everybody, they're your fish, they are the community's fish. Poaching can have a really significant impact. You know, one fish, one female fish can have up to 4,000 eggs in it. You, know, you take that fish out of the system, it can have a significant impact going forward. There's certain areas of the system, for example, on the upper Gary, where we've had a significant decline in, uh, in salmon populations. Um, an area that used to have up to 900 fish a year going through the fish counter, we're now down to some years as little as 20 fish. So if someone targets those fish and takes even one female, then that can have a significant impact on, the, on the, the populations going forward. They are teetering on the brink up there. So we take it very, very seriously and we focus in on those areas to, just to make sure that they're, um, they're not subject to, the, to illegal uh, fishing activity. Some people may say, you know, does poaching still happen in this day and age? The answer is it does. So last year in 2020, we recorded 152 illegal fishing incidents. Of those, we only put the most serious through the courts of, of which there were 12 last year. 
And although we have a pretty good um, conviction rate here, the fines are just really, really not up to scratch. There needs to be a real deterrent to, to people thinking about fishing illegally. There needs to be a real deterrent to stop them doing it. If they're only getting small fines of £100 um, and maybe forfeiture of the gear, it's just not enough to, to, to send the message across. So we would plead with policymakers to please look at these, um, look at these uh, penalties and just let's have something that's fit for purpose. So yeah, we're in a rib craft. It's a six and a half meter um, commercial rib. We're coded for category three, which is 20 miles from any safe haven. At night time, that's restricted to 10 miles from any safe haven, and uh, there must be two of us aboard. Any gill nets, anything that would be set here, we'd be running right over the top of it now. Um, I've been looking for a line of corks, any sort of string out in front of us. There's more fish presented to that net than what's actually taken at the end of it. There's escapees, there's fish that get in there, they get damaged, um, they don't get fully enmeshed by the gills and they manage to escape. But with damage that can subsequently go on to, uh, the fish can die from it. And we know um, on the River Spey we catch Fortunately, less and less, um, a lot less than what we used to catch, but we still get fish every year that are, that are, that are net marked, that are gill net marked. For a time it was quite nasty, we'd get literally razor blades being put through the rope and broken off. Um, pri pri primarily, I think, to damage, to damage the actual vessel, but with the added bonus of maybe cutting up our hands as we were pulling in that anchor as well. Some of the early nights we used to lift, we couldn't even get pictures of them because the locals would find out we were out in the boat and we were lifting a net and they would literally come down to the harbour and pick up loose rocks and stones and sort of launch it down at us and tell us to get a decent job and um, shout all sorts of profanities at us. So you couldn't really hang about long, you had to get there, you had to pick it up and uh, get out of there before you got bombarded with various torpedoes. Fortunately, we've got quite a good network within the bailiff and community. I keep in touch with all the bailiffs in Scotland, really, um, all the way from the neighbour up north, right down to um, my good friend Lee down in the fourth. I meet up with the bailiffs from the from our neighbouring catchment, maybe twice a year throughout the season, and just talk shop, just what's been happening in, in, within our own catchments. And we often find there's, you know, there's a crossover there with the same, you know, with the same people. The last economic survey that we had done was a number of years ago now, but the the outfall of that was um, 20 million into the local economy in Speyside through salmon fishing. It's a natural resource that we can't afford to lose in Speyside. All that little uh, uh, villages up and down the river would literally become ghost towns without the salmon fishing. And it's not just that, everything else depends on it, from dolphins and seals to mergansers, gooseanders, otters, ospreys, they all depend on the salmon. It's definitely got a compounding effect. That money to the economy isn't just, isn't just to, um, to proprietors that own fishing, it's everything from your local fuel station to your tackle shop to your baker, um, um, everybody benefits from it all the local businesses benefit from it. But we need to educate, bring people on, encourage people to maybe go and get a permit. And then the next time we see them on the river, maybe they'll speak to us, give us intelligence. They'll say, yeah, thanks for uh, telling us about uh, the permit system and how the salmon work, how the, the sea trout work, the brown trout. And basically just educating the, the members of the public. It's, it's, it's a way forward. As we have heard, the impact of fish poaching can be devastating. Not just for our wild salmon, but also for other wildlife, including fish, birds and marine mammals. When we consider that an adult salmon can produce several thousand eggs, each fish loss to poaching can have a significant knock-on effect on the future of our wild salmon populations. In order to tackle these important wildlife crimes, Scotland has a highly effective network of enforcement officers, known as water bailiffs. Due to the complexity of the law surrounding fish poaching, we have developed specialised training for our water bailiffs in Scotland. This training includes developing an in-depth understanding of illegal fishing methods and techniques for evidence gathering. Crucially, these events bring together bailiffs from across Scotland to discuss and share experiences. In the last 
year especially during the lockdown, it was just people that had nothing else to do. So they pulled a rod out of the garage and they went for a cast. You'll know instinctively straight away you don't have a Scooby Doo what yeah, you're doing. Yeah, yeah. So that's the level you're dealing with. So if you can somehow say, look, there's an angling club here, why don't you go and join the angling club and maybe maybe you'll can whatever. Yeah. You might turn them into a pain. So I'm an angler one day. Well, I think it's high skilled in the fact that they need to do it right to get it to work, but they damage a lot of fish doing that. Water bailiffs do not operate in isolation from other law enforcement. Bailiffs work closely with Police Scotland to ensure that evidence is as watertight as possible and cases stand the best chance of success when they reach court. Fish poaching is a wildlife crime with wide-ranging impacts on the natural environment. Fisheries Management Scotland works in partnership with Police Scotland at a national level. Locally, District Salmon Fishery Boards have developed a close working relationship with wildlife crime officers in order to protect our precious wild salmon. This joint work can involve national campaigns, patrols on our rivers and locks and specific targeted operations where problems are identified. Fisheries law is complex. To help improve understanding and our chances of success when cases reach court, we also deliver training to Police Scotland and prosecutors from the Procurator Fiscal Service. The fish, the fish will hit that and feel it. <coughs> the first thing the fish does is turn and it's right in. It's in, there's no way out. Anyway, Alan's down in the river just now giving you a demonstration on legal casting. All right, and what you're going to do is you're going to get guys doing that. It will sink down onto the bottom. They'll keep in touch with it until they think it's on the bottom and the hooks are on the bottom and then they do that. Generally speaking, anybody that's fishing should have permission, so whether that's a bit of paper or, or legal right, it's, you know, it depends, but any angler should have a, a piece of paper to say that they're um, fishing within the law, and that should state you know, what, what permission they have and who it's from. The law governing Scotland salmon fisheries is complex, and the terminology is often difficult to understand. We are pressing for reform to make enforcement more effective, with penalties in line with the environmental damage caused. Effective fisheries enforcement has a significant role to play in helping our efforts to address the wild salmon crisis. We are serious about saving our wild salmon, so it's critical that our national enforcement efforts are properly supported and resourced.